Hello everyone. A little while ago, the Worgen have received a new look in World of Warcraft. And what better time to remind ourselves of just how they came to be. Although Archmage Aragal is not the only one responsible for the Worgen. For example, Gen Greymane or the Ancient Night Elf Druids, they definitely had the part to play. Archmage Aragal, a rather mysterious guild name member of the Kirintor, is also a man who could very easily claim to be responsible for the Worgen as we know them today. Aragal seems to be in rather a loop. Perhaps he chose to separate himself from a world disassociated with his interests. Or perhaps so engrossed was he in his own endeavors of the arcane that he was simply unaware of the trials of the land around him. Even before the events that were to unfold before him, Arogo had already a soft spot for dogs and his gold coin that you can fish out of the Dalaran fountain. A description says, I wish someday to retire to my own tidy little estate with a bunch of pet dogs to keep me company. If only the man knew what the future was going to bring. Aragal's early life is little known, but we do know that he was the respected Gilnean, who went on to join the much-respected Kirintor in Dalaran. We're not certain how long Aragal was with the Kirintor, a little insight into the research that he was doing. Things for Aragal, they seem to be going along rather quietly, but things cannot stay quiet for long, and everything changed when the Scourge attacked Dalaran, seeking the Book of Medivh. The Scourge overwhelmed the city, and the Book of Medivh was taken into their possession. But the Scourge threats, it was not merely limited to the magical city. The Grey Main Wall, a huge stone border separating Gilneas from the rest of the world, it was being attacked tirelessly by these undead Scourge. The future of Gilneas and all of its people, it lay in the hands of its king, Gen Greymane. The weight of the responsibility, it must have been consuming, and Gen was quickly running out of time. After Archmage Aragal of the Kirintor had returned to the area, Gen decided to call upon him for assistance in saving Gilneas from this ruthless enemy, to find some way to find some end to the madness. In all the chaos, some of the details that remain hazy, and we aren't exactly sure when Aragal fled Aladan. It's possible that he was summoned by Gen to aid Gilneas in its time of need, or he could have left when the situation on Dalaran became dire. We are relatively confident that however he came to leave Dalaran, one place that he came to settle in was a small area just outside of the Grey Main Wall, which they called Volgan's Field, as we find several of his spellbooks within the small wheat farm. So Arogal, in his research, he'd come across the works of a powerful mage of Dalaran, and this was before the arrival of the Scourge. This mage, called Ur, had written a book documenting a race of beastly wolfmen called the Worgen. Followed previously as old rural folklore, Ur insists in his book that the Worgen are indeed real and are a very dangerous threat to the world. Though he was right, there were secrets of the Worgen that not even Ur understood. He thought that they were an otherworldly presence, calling the Worgen's home a dark place, a place of nightmare, and that they were content to remain there. Ur was not to know how wrong he was. The Worgen, they were imprisoned in the Emerald Dream, and they were held there against their will. A long, long time, thousands of years ago, before any of these events, they proven to be a volatile threat, with the ability to turn their victims into more of their kind. The druid Malfurion and his newly founded Scenarian Circle, they were forced to use a powerful artifact, the Scythe of a Loon, to send the Worgen to the realm of the Emerald Dream, where a great tree called Daralnir, it was the best hope to sedate their rage and soothe their nature. Ur was correct, however, in his assumption that the return of the Worgen would not be a good time for the world, and said that should they be released upon it, no pact may be struck, no secrets may be learned, no good can come from these beasts, and if found in our world and not destroyed, our peril will be dire. This dark warning was not enough to deter Arugo. Seeing for himself the severity of the situation, he mentions these creatures to King Greymane and tells him that these creatures are imbued with unnatural strength and pure ferocity. We cannot be sure exactly how Arugal summoned the Worgen from their rest in the Emerald Dream, but the Book of Ur, it does mention that the powerful magic is capable of drawing them into our world, and that such chants are better left unused. At first, these Worgen summoned by Arugal, they proved efficient tools in ridding Gilneas of its enemies. But when the Scourge retreated, the Worgen decided to turn their fury upon the people of Gilneas themselves. Gen closed the great gates of the Grey Main Wall that day. But he didn't realize that those that were bitten, that they'd infected with the Worgen curse.
look at what you've become. Those cursed beasts. They've left you nothing more than just another wretched mongrel. Do you even remember what you did to your friends? Your kind, haunting the wilds unchecked. As he saw countless people slaughtered by the beast that he unleashed, Arugo was driven mad with guilt. He felt the responsibility for the actions of the worgen. And so, his once keen mind now lost the guilt and madness, he felt a parental duty to these feral beings. Arugo took the worgen to an area above the small hamlet of Pyrewood, and they sought refuge in a keep formerly owned by Baron Silverlane. That is, until the worgen overwhelmed his home, and his spirits now haunts its halls. The new inhabitants renamed their new home to something just a little bit more fitting. They called it Shadowfang Keep. There he stayed with his worgen with some stalking around Silverpine Forest, now being known as the Sons of Arugo. His sanity completely lost. Arugo came out of the influence of the leader of the Worgen that he had unleashed. Alpha Prime they called him, and he referred to him as his master. Alpha Prime sought to increase the numbers of his kind in order to besiege Gilneas and retrieve that artifact that they believed to be hidden in the city. They wanted to get their hands, or claws in this case, they wanted to get the Scythe of a Loon. With this artifact, they could summon the last of their kind from the Emerald Dream and make sure that they'd never be banished again. Now following the guidance of Alpha Prime, Arugo used his magic to add the people of Pyrewood to the numbers of the Worgen, supposedly using the council of the village as his puppets to keep the new Worgen under his control. His magic spread far across Silverpine Forest, and when the Forsaken started the campaign to conquer Silverpine, they had Arugo's Worgen stalking in the forest, halting their plans. The Forsaken called the Lair Dawnbreaker back in Classic. They sent Horde Adventurers out in search of evidence that could uncover Arugal's magic and aid him in stopping it. Eventually, Dalar, with the aid of these Horde Adventurers, they were able to put an end to Arugal's magic. But he has one last quest to do, to end Arugal as well. And so, Arugal was slain in Shadowfang Keep. But even in death, Arugal was to remain tormented when he was resurrected by the Sen Lane at the request of the Lich King. They sent him to Solstice Village, a small trapper village in Northrend. There, the Lich King was seeking a brand new worgen army, a worgen army created by Arugal to aid the forces of the Scourge. Not content to just take Solstice Village alone, the Shade of Arugal then later moved on to Silverbrook, where more of the people were converted. He made his base of operations on Blood Moon Isle, a small island off the coast of Grizzly Hills. It is here, in Shadowfang Tower, that the Shade of Arugal resides, and ultimately is slain by adventurers that travel to Northrend, and a woman named Sasha, the daughter of one of his most recent victims. Although he may now be gone, Arugal was not so easily forgotten. When Death Knights in Legion were trying to raise impressive steeds of the damned for their four horsemen, Salanar the Horseman, he needed five unholy essences, known as the Aggregates of Anguish. One of these, the Essence of Darkness, it can be claimed from the soul of Arugal by slaying him one final time in the Shadowlands, a realm filled with the souls of the dead. This time, it's the Death Knight followers of the Ebonblade who take on the task. They return with the essence from his defeated soul, and who knows, maybe in the future, Arugal can actually find some peace. And while he may be gone from Warcraft, Arugal, he lives on in Hearthstone. Introduced during the Witchwood expansion, Arugo, he no longer serves Alpha Prime, nor does he serve the Lich King, and instead he wants to raise a brand new army for his new master, and that master would be you. I did this! I cursed them all! His card ability enables him to place a copy of a drawn minion back into your hands, and so Arugo, he will make a new army for you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Archmage Arugo so far. Who knows if you'll ever get new adventures in Warcraft, or perhaps even live on in Hearthstone itself. But for now, thank you very much for watching everyone. By all means, let us know in the comments down below which cards you would like us to cover next. You could also subscribe to my channel if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time, see ya!